Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all well. Today is Bank Holiday Monday. That is how far ahead I am in videos because this video is coming out tonight. It's insane. I've had a very busy Easter so actually getting any filming done was a no-no. Um, my plan for this week really was to move on to all of those moulds that were sent to me by Moulds and Shapes. You would have seen the unboxing. But something else came up and I did a 180 and I have to get this out of my system. And that is what the next couple of videos are going to be on. And that is hydro dipping. So one of my amazing friends on here, Joy, she's also a patron over on my Patreon page. Joy messaged me about a week and a half ago asking if we could hydro dip with Jesmonite. Now, my initial thoughts were probably yes, because you can hydro dip a lot of things. And I haven't done any dipping since school. I want to say like a good 25, 30 years it has been since I've done any hydro dipping at all. And I think back then we would have called it marbling or something like that, where you put ink on top of water and then you dip your item in to pick up the pattern. And as soon as she asked me, I cannot tell you, it was seconds later, I ran. I ran to my craft room, grabbed some spray paint, I grabbed my ugly pieces of work that like or plain pieces of work and I ran out into the garden and I tested it out and it worked uh it oh gosh it worked a dream so I said straight away joy I have to do a video on this I have to show people the results and you watch it's just gonna muck up today it's gonna be awful but here we are today I'm actually just gonna grab a few more pieces that I've already made pre-made um, pieces from my shelf behind me because it's fully stacked so in today's video I'm not gonna run through the creation of the Jesmonite pieces I'm just gonna grab what I have and I'm gonna show you the hydro dipping element of it and then Wednesday I'm probably gonna make a couple of pieces from scratch in the colors that I really want to try but for today's purposes we are just hydro dip so i've only been hydro dipping for around a week now guys so there's so much i still need to learn but in this video i will be using spray paint i'm sure there are other mediums like oils or acrylic inks and things like that but for the purposes of this video we are going spray paints so you will need to grab or find or purchase some spray paints if you want to try this technique the next thing you're going to need is a bucket or a box that you are not emotionally attached to okay because it will get destroyed i bought this one here from the pound shop and as you can see i've already run some tests last week so i've done this once this is my second time doing it the next thing you will need is gloves to protect your hand you just have to have gloves i've got my night trial gloves here and I've also filled the bucket pretty much an inch from the two inches maybe from the top with warm water you want warm water not cold and not hot if it's too cold the spray paint will solidify on the surface and it won't pick up your item won't pick it up so it has to be warm just to keep that spray paint in a fluid state now colors really are up to you but I'm just going in here with my gold copper blues greens whatever I can really the trick is to dip slowly so this is my first dip I'm going in super super slowly this is going to make sure that every little nook and cranny of my tray is picking up that spray paint then i'm going to shimmy and shake it in the water to get rid of all the surface spray paint and before pulling it back out again and here we go it looks like an ocean lagoon i didn't actually really love it at first but realizing that the tray itself is a my kind of like a pastel green oh my gosh really added to it so no spray paint got into the center point and it kind of yeah it's created this gorgeous kind of lagoon image if you like <laughs> now to clean the surface off this is why I was saying about working fast you want to spray fast spray really really fast and then dip slow so you can see here I'm spraying quite quickly between colors I'm leaving all of the caps off which means I can just grab a can spray it grab a can spray it and grab and so on and so on after about a minute, that spray paint solidifies, which is where you saw me coming in with the tissue. It just all comes off in one bit. It comes off the surface, which is why you want to spray fast and then dip fast, but dip slow. 
I hope I'm making sense. Basically, the longer you leave that surface with spray paint on, the more chance it's not going to work. I will show you one of my fails towards the end of the video. If I failed miserably at my first attempt and I'll show you that. But here we go. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. I absolutely love it. So here I am now, it's about a minute later. All of that spray paint has now gone in solid. So I can just take it out with a tissue or you could use a wooden stick, whichever works best for you. Another one I'm doing here, we're not really focusing on the colours because we're all going to have different colours, but honestly, blue and blue and copper, my goodness me, blue and copper, mwah, it is a dream combination for me. So I just went in blue, copper, blue, copper, so on and so on, and then I grabbed my item to dip it. So you spray fast, dip slow, dip it super slow, allowing it to pick up all of that spray paint from the surface. I also dip at an angle to make sure that every nook and cranny of that piece is going to get a coverage. And I love the way it goes up the sides as well and then shake it off in the water, pull it out of the water and you've got yourself a beautiful blue and copper tray. Now, hydro dipping has been around for ever i have no doubt about it because I, like i said i was doing it in school 25 30 years ago so again you would have all seen videos like this i am sure this video was really just to show you that it can be done with jesmonite we all know hydro dipping works but it can be done with jesmonite and i am obsessed with the results the one thing i will say here again you can see me spray 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 really really quick with your sprays um what happens is it then all starts to travel back along the surface of the water. So you can kind of gauge it, get an idea. Okay, I like that pattern, I'm gonna dip now. Or mm, don't really like that pattern, I'm gonna spray a bit more now. Or I'm gonna spray a bit over the blue or I'm gonna spray a bit over the gold. So here I am dipping the pot. Now, straight away, as soon as I put my pot in, I realized that's a whole hunk of gold that's gonna come out on that pot. Because there wasn't much detail in the surface, there wasn't much pattern going on in the spray paint. So again, it's looking at what the results are on the surface. I could have broken that gold chunk up with another spray of another color or even, yeah, anything that would have just broken it up. You can't kind of swirl it around with your finger or a stick because that will just automatically pick up the spray paint off the surface of the water. So here we are now. This whole pot is now wet. I'm just showing you here, it will not work if I try to dip it again. This is all just letting you guys know, these are the techniques that I've realized and all the little tips and tricks. Watch what happens. It repels, it repels all of the spray paint because the pot is already wet. So the water and the metallic spray paint, they just don't like each other and it's repelled it. And as you can see on the back here, there's really not much has clung to the surface of the pot. So another tip for you, make sure your item is bone dry, bone dry, not a single drop of water. Otherwise the spray paint won't cling to it. And yeah, if I can help you guys out in this video from what I've learned in the past week of doing this, then that is what I'm here for. The next combination, I think I used a pink spray paint here and it wasn't until afterwards I realized the pink spray paint that I have is actually gloss finish. All the rest are either matte or metallic, whereas this was a gloss finish. So honestly, yeah, I was worried about the dry time. It didn't take that long because it was a really, really sunny day today. So I was really lucky. So it didn't take that long. But um, yeah, if you are wondering, I am out in my garden and I've got some protective cardboard down and you can see how messy my hands are getting, which is why I also, I also have to tell you, wear gloves. Gloves are everything. With this one, I'm going proper John Wayne. I have got a can in both hands. I am spray, bang, spray, bang, spray, bang. I'm kind of creating this tiger look unintentionally, but I'm kind of liking it. And this was to try and cover up my disaster. This was my first attempt today. Look at it, absolute disaster. I dipped too late. So the, the spray paint had basically solidified on the surface and it just didn't pick it up. It was a stringy, gloopy mess, but ooh, Okay, listen, I tried to hydro dip a plain tray. It turned out disastrous. I then tried to fix the disaster by hydro dipping it again. It came out okay, it came out okay. 
but this one you may recognize from my Instagram this was my very very first attempt at hydro dipping jesmonite last week I posted this photo on my Instagram and a few of you did say it reminds me of Van Gogh like starry sky I think was his painting really beautiful results again this is the blue and the gold combination something I love so so much really really love them and honestly the surface does end up textured yes the surface does end up textured do you have to seal them I don't think so I don't think so I've tried scratching it off with my nails it won't come off um, it seems pretty permanent to me but for the purposes of the video I was just showing you the mess I'd made <laughs> For the purposes of the video, I am going to run a heat test on these now because I can see that that question would come up. Can we use them as coasters? Can we then, you know, put a hot cup of tea down on this surface? So for the purposes of the video, I do actually run a heat test and I went and boiled the kettle and I filled up one of my biggest mugs with boiling water straight from the kettle and I placed it down on the coaster. I'm going to run it for about 30 minutes preempting any questions that I may get about whether or not this um, provides us with a heat proof surface so yeah I boiled the kettle filled the cup up I actually put more water in at that point to make it heavier um, and this is 30 minutes later I came out to see if it sticks to the cup and it did it stuck to the cup I tried it again I tried it again about 30 minutes later and when I actually stuck stuck so <laughs> I lifted the cup up stuck there for a really good minute um, so okay we might not have a heat proof surface it's definitely not impacted the surface i don't see any damage i don't see any condensation marks i tried scratching the surface with my nails everything's okay it looked exactly like it did before i put the cup on so no damage was done but you really don't want a coaster that gets lifted up every time you lift your cup of tea and trust me jesmonite is heavy if you've never used jesmonite it is heavy so it's not ideal can you top coat with resin quite possibly i've not tried it can we spray top coat quite possibly yes i've again not tried it on these items you could even get a heat proof spray paint i mean there's so many options here but this really is just me coming to you with a very raw vid because I just tried this last week and today was my second attempt. I absolutely love the results of these blues and golds. The blues, golds and golds are my go-to. Um, but also I don't have any other colours right now. So let me know um, if you do try this. Um, definitely tag me if you're showing your pictures on Instagram. Tag me over on Instagram. I'd love to see what you make. I have searched YouTube, I've searched everywhere for videos on Jesmonite hydro dipping, I couldn't find any, so I'm, that's not me saying I'm the first to do it, I'm just saying there are no YouTube on it, so definitely tag me over on Instagram, and yeah, um, the amazing Surya over at Goldline Artistry said I should start a hashtag, she said it would make a really cool hashtag, and Claire made me do it. <laughs> Someone tagged me today in the paper and Jesmonite saying Claire made me do it and I just thought that would make the cutest hashtag ever. <laughs> so if you want to use the hashtag, by all means, use that hashtag. I'd really love to build that up. I think it would be so much fun to see all of your creations under that hashtag of Claire made me do it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any other questions that I didn't directly answer, then please leave a comment down below. And as always, hit that thumbs up button. It's the thumbs up button that helps me grow more than anything else. So if you are still here at this point, do also consider subscribing because you clearly stayed to the end. I really appreciate you all and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.